Uh, Jason, we're here at MP Engineering in Hinkley, um, a business that has been in operation since about 1995, is it? Could you tell us a little bit of the backstory? Well, we've actually been in business since 1981, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, my dad started it up as a little bit of a tool room, uh, making jigs and fixtures for people. So um, since 1995, that's when we've been predominantly a CNC machine shop. So if we take the last 25 years, let's, I shouldn't say we should forget the first 10, but the no. last 25 years is what I'm really here to explore. Okay. Um, firstly, these MAM 72, 32 pallet Matsura machining centres, five axis machining centres have played a big part in that sort of 25 year period, haven't they? Certainly in the latter, latter day. Certainly, the last um, eight years um, we've been uh, using the, the MAM machining centres. Uh, they've um, took our business to a different level really. Um, they've given us a shift that wasn't there um, you know, we're just running a normal 10, 10 hour shift in a day. Um, now these are running all night long. A lot of engineers that watch our videos um, and our channel may think to themselves, well, this is well beyond me. You know, this is the type of machine I see in a, as you said earlier, in, in a car plant. Um, yes. But that's really not the case, is it? No, no, not at all. I mean, um, you just have to, it's just how you utilise the machine. You can have different, different parts on different pallets. You can have a, a run of, um, I don't say lang vices on, on the pallets, you can have a run of fixtures and just leave the machine set up so it's there, you're instantly going, making parts straight away. What if I was to say to you though, Jason, that in the area or the floor area that a MAM 7235V from Matsura sits, you could maybe fit two or three smaller machining centres and have two or three spindles, wouldn't that be better? Um, well, no, not at all, because you just don't get the reliability, um, in my experience, with the other machine tools that I'm getting from the Matsura. And um, also, we've got the Renishaw probing and the laser tool checking on there. So we've got a reliable process, we've got a reliable machine tool. And that, in, in, in my experience, is worth its weight in gold. I'm just not seeing that from other manufacturers presently. Uh, so it, with this machine as well, you can experience upwards of 90% um, uptime, which I suppose is where your argument comes from, the fact that that spindle continually runs. Exactly, exactly, that's it. So what would you actually be making here then, Jace, in the, in the, in the majority of the types of parts that you're actually machining? Uh, we make highly complex five-axis components. Um, when I say highly complex five-axis components, they could be, uh, you know, they, they, they could look like a a 2D component as it were but we're machining them in five axes so we're reducing setups but a lot of the stuff that we do is really quite uh, trick. Uh, are you chasing tight limits? Uh, definitely yeah we're going to, down to microns now and um, the Matsuras with the uh, refrigeration units that we've got on the coolant are allowing us to hit those limits oh. and um, obviously aligning with my inspection department coolant set at 21 degrees inspection departments at 21 degrees it's quite seamless now. And in, ter in terms of how the business operates and each machine is its own cell, do you have one man per machine or is one man on two machines? So, so how we work here is um, one man will take the original model from the customer, he will program um, that on, uh, on our CAM package and he will own that job right the way through from receiving the model to getting the finished component off of the machine. Okay, and what happens at night time? Because having the unmanned run on these machines is a key part of, of, of what you do. But how do you know, and if it does happen, if the machine stops, what's, what's your, you know, how do you overcome that? Okay, so what we've done is we've got CCTV. Um, some of the guys will be uh, thinking it's for me watching what they're doing, but um, no, we're, it, it's so the operators can have a look. Um, I say the operators, the programmers can look at what's going on on their machine, on their computers or on their iPhones. They dial in on an app and they can see what's going on on the control. Okay, and then if there's a problem, they can come in and they can do whatever they need to do and then keep the machine going, keep that spindle turning. Exactly. Uh, the loading of this machine, can it be done while the machine's actually machining as well? So, for example, through um, here, your pallet system, can you go in and set all your 32 pallets whilst the five-axis solution is in operation? Yeah, exactly. You can machine, um, you can set up um, whilst the machine's running, no problem. Um, in, in fact, that's what we're doing on this machine at the moment. There's fixturing in there, loading two, machine, two components up onto a pallet at a time, and that's done uh, whilst the machine's running. 
these are, have, have, have played a massive part in the growth of your business, but they weren't your latest investment with Matsura. Uh, further down the shop, you've got a brand new MX330, which has got a 10 pallet pool on it, one of their latest innovations and a popular product. Uh, why not just buy another MAM 7235V? Uh, why go for the MX330, Jason? Well, the MX330 sits well with, within our, for, for, for our Formula One work um, because normally we've got a lot smaller batches than we're seeing with aerospace. Um, so batches of around six off of each hand component, something like that. But, but more uh, ideally, it's got a, a much smaller footprint than I've got with the MAM 72. And uh, as you can see here, we're a bit tight for space, so uh, yeah. And when you first saw that MX330, did you think to yourself, ah, oh, that would be perfect for um, my motorsport or aerospace applications, as you said. It, it, yeah, uh, I mean, it just sits brilliantly within it, uh, with, with, with MP Engineering, definitely. To be fair, I, I'd like another two or three. Um, well, you have so. ordered another one, I believe, which is turning up here in January. So the 330 that you had this year is the first of two. It is, definitely, and then there may be one if Dom's uh, got one left at the end of the year as well. So, you yeah. have another one. Now, will that run as efficiently in the same manner of the, as these machines? Do you load the 10 pallets up and leave it uh, running overnight in the same fashion? Yeah, definitely. I mean, again, we've got the Renishaw probing on there. We've got the laser tool check-in. So um, we run it exactly the same as we'd run the MAMs. Even, uh, you can even take a pallet from the MAM and put it into the MX330. It's not an issue. When you look at Matsura as a brand, this was where you started with them. And you look at the 330. Were you surprised at their, their venture into a smaller machine with less pallets and actually how cost-effective that model was as well? Because I know its its price point, its entry to the market is very competitive, isn't it? Yeah, it's really competitive, but I mean, it, you're not getting any less of a machine for, for, for the money, really. Um, it's You're getting all the, um, let's say, the history of, of a man machine um, just in, within a smaller footprint. But within when I say within a smaller footprint, OK, you've not got as many tools as you've got on a MAM, you've not got as many pallets, but actual working capacity is, is comparable with a MAM machine. So it's essentially, it's almost like a scaled down version, isn't it? Let's say, let's say you didn't want to have 32 pallets as a, an engineer, you didn't have the floor space for one of these, and maybe you didn't want to spend or the invest at this level, the 330 might just be the perfect sweet spot. Exactly, but you're not scaling down your working envelope. Your working envelope is exactly the same as you get on a man. I want to get a couple more points out of you, Jason, about Matsura as a company. We hear it a lot. Um, I'm, I'm still waiting for the day I go into a Matsura customer and they say to me, you know, the machines aren't reliable, the service isn't very good, but it just isn't happening. It's not going to happen here either, is it? No, it's, it's, it's refreshing to uh, have, have somebody that, that will work with you and, and, and understand the problems that as a manufacturer you have. You know, when we, we don't live in a, an ideal world and things do go wrong. Uh, Matsura are, are, are absolutely uh, brilliant at coming and servicing the machines and uh, to be perfectly honest, the machines are that reliable as long as we have them serviced twice a year, when we're not having um, too many breakdowns. And I hope I don't regret to that, that comment. And when we started this, we spoke about a lot of people thinking that this type of machine was found in a car plant or a big OEM business. Yeah. Um, are you hearing and seeing, like us, that Matsura are actually starting to take their place in modern machine shops like yours, subcontract engineers, business that needs flexibility and need to be agile, would you agree that that's a good place for Matsuras now as well? Uh, definitely. I mean, uh, you, you've only got to go around the uh, Formula One teams and uh, these things are springing up all over the place. So, uh, yeah. And in the smaller machine shops too? And, and in the smaller machine shops, yeah, definitely. Although I'm not into my uh, competitors' machine shops as much as you are. So uh. Uh, Next year for you guys, wow, what a year this year has been. Much of the same, do you think, regardless of what's happening in the outside world when you turn on the telly? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, we've, we've only got plans to grow the business. Um, we're, 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 we're venturing well into our uh, aerospace space uh, work now and uh, Formula One works just um, coming in thick and fast so yeah I only see good things. Now, you mentioned about Matsura having a turning machine earlier as well didn't you? If they had uh, a Matsura branded turning machine that would be the next thing on your floor. Uh, oh it, it certainly would and I'm saying to Dom all the while when we when we get him on coming through the door but uh, unfortunately he's not took me up on that yet. But uh, uh, I think yeah. the Murata is certainly a good place to start so who knows thank you very much Jason. Yeah, brilliant thank you.